In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Christ is in our midst. So on August 6th, this happens every few years, that the Feast of the Transfiguration falls on a Sunday. And as you notice, we do everything that's related to Transfiguration. We almost forget about the resurrection, and we celebrate mostly the transfiguration because of how important it is as a feast of the Lord himself. We heard the account from St. Matthew through the Gospel. Also in the Matins, we heard the same story from Luke's perspective. And Mark also mentions this event in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. But most important as well is the epistle reading from St. Peter's universal uh, epistle that we heard as well, and it talks about the same event from Peter's perspective. So Matthew and Luke and Mark were not there to tell us what happened, but Peter was there, and he told us his account and how he experienced the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ and his transfiguration. So in that event, three people were there that we know of, Peter, James, and John, and then Moses shows up because he's a representative of the law in the Old Testament. And then Elijah because he rep represents all the prophets who talked about Jesus and the coming of the Son of God to us. However, this story is not just about the historical event of the transfiguration itself. It is about our own spiritual journey going up the mountain to meet the glory of the Lord and to transform and to transfigure our own lives to become in His likeness. So this is not just about Christ transfiguring, but also about us transfiguring through our spiritual journey to become in His likeness. And because that participation in the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that the Peter, James, and John experienced, is what was meant for us when we were created. But because of Adam, this participation was not possible for a long time until Christ came back and made it possible to restore that communion that was lost since that time. Now, we talk a lot about the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, His light. Glory is the one thing that we heard today referred to as the sun, the light, his clothes transformed to become like whiter than the snow. In different accounts, they describe the same thing. It's a lot of light and bright light that they experienced as the disciples. However, in our modern time, the way we think about glory might not be similar to how they understood it or how they experienced it. When we talk about glory these days, we think about fame, glamorous celebrities coming out of their cars on red carpets and all the flashlights coming around them and that's what we think is glorious these days and there's a lot of vibes around them a lot of excitement that's what we might think about glory in our modern terms but actually this is not how the apostles the three who were there experienced his glory we notice that they fell down on their faces in awe. This is exactly how we experience the glory of the Lord. Imagine a little child sitting in his mom's lap and feeling that peace and tranquility that we as adults most of the time miss. That's exactly how we experience the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is being in his presence, feeling that peace and tranquility that comes through connecting with Him in love and communion so that we can feel His presence and His glory encompass ourselves. So that, that participation, as I said, was lost for a long time since the time of Adam because he broke the communion with God so that participation in His glory was not possible. So if we look deeper into the event itself and see how that applies to our life, the timing was very important on when the transfiguration happened. It was before he was crucified, when Christ was preparing his disciples to go to, the crucif to his crucifixion, 
He took them to the mountain and showed them who he was, showed them his glory. So the connection between transfiguration and crucifixion is very, very important to the point that when we celebrate the transfiguration on August um, 6th, we celebrate the elevation of the cross 40 days from now on September 14th. So this is how the church put the connection. 40 days is exactly the time between his transfiguration and his crucifixion, although these dates are not historical. It does not matter. We celebrate them for another reason, which was the consecration of the churches when they discovered the cross and the consecration of the church on Mount Tabor. So that's why these dates are there. But the, the number of days is very important to make it clear to us that there's no transfiguration unless there is crucifixion. And that's why it was important for the Lord to tell his disciples, as we heard, don't tell anyone about this until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. And that's why he did the transfiguration in itself, not to show how powerful he was, but because he wanted to encourage his disciples so when they see him crucified, they will remember. This is the same Lord who was very powerful, who was very glorious. He is crucified because of his own will. And so they do not lose heart. They are prepared for his crucifixion through seeing his glory and his transfiguration. Now, the event itself is transfiguration. It's a change of who Christ showed himself to be. Until that point, Christ showed up as a regular person. He looked like every one of us. And he did some miracles, but his look was exactly the same as everyone else. In the transfiguration, he did not reflect light from outside. As I mentioned, famous people get the flashlights from the cameras. From Christ, for Christ, on the transfiguration, the light was coming out of him. He was the source of light. Uh, he was the source of light. So he was not reflecting an outside light. It was coming out of him. He is the source of the true light. And so in his presence, the reaction of the disciples was very clear, as I mentioned. They fell down on their faces in awe. Not fear. The Lord tells them, do not be afraid. Because every time the church invites us to stand in fear in front of God, actually it's referring to awe in front of God. Although I have to say, fear is necessary and well-deserved for our own sins. But when the church asks us to stand in front of God in awe, means that it, the church is inviting us, the prayer is inviting us to experience His glory and to stand in communion. Because when we stand in front of God with love and communion, then we will experience Him as peace and we will stand in front of Him and sometimes we will fall down in front of Him in awe because of his glory. Now, because of how awesome it was, Peter said to the Lord, let us build three booths or three tents so that we can stay here. He liked it so much. It was so awesome, right? So he wanted to stay there, but the Lord told him, no, you have to go through crucifixion first, and then you can experience this once more. So, Luke, in the, in the Gospel this morning, said, Peter said this, but he did not know what he was talking about. He, Peter did not understand what was going, and going on. So the Lord told him, no, let's go down. We have to go through the crucifixion first. So, in a way, it's a reminder that the transfiguration is connected to the crucifixion, and we cannot experience the glory of the Lord unless we bear our crosses and follow Him. There is no way to experience the transfiguration like the disciples unless we experience the crucifixion ourselves. Now, not to lose heart, the Lord Jesus Christ also manifests Himself to us, the regular people, like the disciples, to strengthen us 
to encourage us. He manifests His glory to us sometimes, without expecting it, through a moving prayer, through a person that comes into our life, sometimes through something that we read or see. Still, He tries to show us His face so that we do not lose heart and be prepared to follow Him and bear our crosses. But then He leaves us. He touches our hearts and then leaves for a while so that we get to prove ourselves through obedience and humility. That's why the witness that came from the Father said, this is my beloved Son. We have heard this before, right? It was in His baptism. On the day of Christ's baptism, we heard, this is my beloved Son. Now He completes the sentence, listen to Him. We cannot see the transfiguration unless we are obedient and we are humble, humble in following Christ. The last thing I want to leave you with, why light? Why did His glory show as light, a very bright light, even more than, the, than that of the sun? Light for us as humans is not only for us to see. We need the light to see and walk in life. So when it's dark, it is very hard to even live our lives. There's another reason. If you check how the world itself that we live in is created, we eat light. Light of the sun is very important for plants to make food for us and for other animals, and then we feed on plants and animals. If it was not for the sun, there's no way we can physically sustain ourselves. So we eat light. Light is the one thing that sustains us physically. So imagine how much more nourishing it is for us to bask in the light and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ so that not only to nourish ourselves through communion with Him, but also to transform and to transfigure our lives so that we become like Him. Amen.